This week on Previous World Weekly, Alan Moore is grumpy again. New York Comic Con gets meta, and we discuss rede- de- wow, nailed that. We discuss redemption in comics. It's all happening right now on Previous World Weekly. Hey guys, it's Wednesday. You're here. <laughs> I was not expecting it. I was like, I'm ready to take this over. Yeah, no, I'm here. I made it. I'm, I'm, I'm here. But you know what? Go for it. Knock it out the park. Let's see what you got. I was going to steal your whole tagline. Like, hey guys, what's up? It's Wednesday. <laughs> it's a new comic book day, which means it's once again time for Previous World Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Tori Jeffrey Allen. And I'm your other host, Ashton Greenwood, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. the Duchess of Free Comic Book Day slash Halloween Comic Fest. <laughs> All right, all right. And like, yeah, I'm incredibly late. Sorry, guys. I literally was in my car yelling at people five minutes ago, just five minutes ago, maybe two. But I'm here, and I'm not the only one who's here. Uh, Anna Mee is joining us. Hey, guys. (laughs) How's it going? Cool, cool, cool. Doing all right. Uh, you all right there? You getting the good audio? Oh, you don't have the me is me is leaving us, guys. So this is gonna be our last show on this side of uh, America. Hmm. I know. But I'll be back. A, yeah, I you'll promise. be around. We'll it's, find it's, some it's, way. Right. It's not like you're gone, gone. Oh, I'm second. gonna miss you. Right, don't sorry, leave us. Bit... <laughs> I know, I'm sad. I'm I'm gonna really miss like hanging out and going to the office and joking around while we, uh, you know do a bunch of takes sometimes. <laughs> it sounds accurate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, like we never said we were professionals. We just like what we do. So there you go. <laughs> exactly. Just get it done. <laughs> a perfect example is this show right now. So it's all good. Um, no, the, the live thing makes us do better, I think. I think this is great practice. You know, I think you're I right about I feel like that. that's true. I agree with yeah. that. 100%. I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, so this is the part of the show typically, uh, where we talk about things we saw this week. And so I'm going to kick it over to Mia. Is there anything, and we didn't practice this or anything, so I'm not sure if you actually have something lined up. Was there anything in particular you wanted to talk about first? Uh, about things that happened this week, that things that I saw, Mm -hmm. um, I watched the house of Bly Manor. So I don't know if you guys have, uh, heard of that. It's the sequel to the, uh, the haunting of Hill house. Which is on Netflix. Um, so the first one, great horror story. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, they just did the second season this weekend, uh, which is really good. I actually tried to make it last for three days. Uh, and so now I guess I have like another year, maybe year and a half to have to wait for another season. But it's really good. Really, the second one was a little less scary, but better, I guess, classic horror story so definitely recommend that on netflix okay mm. i'm gonna do it and that's kind of perfect for spooky season too mm-hmm. all right yeah 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 no i'm definitely i'm definitely starting to get into the mood like it took me a couple of weeks mm-hmm. but now i'm like okay i want to watch horror everything all the time right now so yeah, I feel that. i'm absolutely absolutely down for it uh, things I saw this week, I, that actually horrified me. I mean, just oh, yeah. a little bit, actually. It wasn't really horrifying. It wasn't even all that surprising. Alan Moore's talking a lot of smack, uh, <laughs> this past week. Um, okay. So Ashton, you know how like a couple of weeks ago we were talking about like how people don't actually read things. They kind Ooh. of react to them and like, yeah. you know, so I want to clarify one thing. Alan Moore did not say that superhero movies are like, you know, the worst thing in the world. Well, actually he did, but he didn't, he didn't blame everything, everything wrong with humanity on comic book movies. Right. That's not what he actually said. And Mm -hmm. of course, because it's Alan Moore, because he's very verbose, because he's, uh, he very, he very much likes the words. Right. Uh, If you read what he said, it's a little bit more complicated than that and definitely more Mm -hmm. nuanced, but I will say this one thing about this, his ultimate takeaway was that, comic book movies are kind of a part of the regression of, mm-hmm. uh, of a certain part of the demographic. Right. And here's my thing about that. Like Alan Moore, I know you're not listening. I know you don't care. <laughs> right. But here's the thing, man. P- 
people have hard lives, right? People live in reality all the time, right? And reality yeah. is difficult. Reality is tough. So excuse them if they want to watch a little bam, bam, punch, punch, kick, 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 superhero saves a day, and then they get like two hours of escapism. It's not mm-hmm. the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? Like, just he's always complaining about this. And it's just like, all right, Alan, like, okay, I, you know, he has a point, right? To an extent, but mm-hmm. something can be said for, you know what, you're this wizard off in some, in the woods somewhere, practicing your snake magic. How about you just let people have their escapism? So I just wanted to get that off my chest because I, I just like, he's, he's beating a dead horse at this point. I don't know why. I almost feel like reporters at, uh, want him to say something like that and he gives it to them every single time. So what was that in the bottom there, Johnny? It looked like we had a little comment. Yeah, Joseph, I'm with you, Troy, 100%. Yeah, I just... Right, can I be the dissenting opinion, as I always yeah, am? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I fe- I have a lot of feelings about this. Um, mm-hmm. I, I simultaneously agree and disagree. Um, mm. And to a certain extent, I agree with what you said. Like, you know, media is supposed to, in some aspects, be escapism. It's supposed to be mm-hmm. a place you can go to, like, have all of these different adventures inside of your one lifetime and experience things that are, like, completely spectacular and fun and make you feel weightless. But at the Mm -hmm. same time, I do think that that there is some danger in going that route like all of the time, because the Mm -hmm. flip side of that is like media gives you the opportunity to kind of see how other walks of life live and experience their stories. So I think it's important Mm -hmm. to challenge yourself and to push yourself to like read books or watch movies that are unsettling that do upset you because it's important to have like a broader worldview. I'm not saying everything needs to like have the French ending, so to speak, but Mm. I think it's important to realize (laughs) that not everyone, like you don't always get the girl or save the day or whatever. So I think there's a balance to strike there. I think Alan Moore is too far on one side and maybe you are Mm -hmm. too far on the other. So Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I mean, I respect it. Mia, (laughs) Mia, you want to chime in with this? Actually, let me provide some proper context here. He said specifically, he believes the popularity of superhero films and Trump are possibly both symptoms of a rising anti-intellectualism and a denial of reality and an urge mm-hmm. for simplistic and sensational solutions. He also That's talked he about nostalgia a lot. And he was like, this is all of this, like superhero consumption is about like nostalgia and easier times. I mean, but that, that's what, you know, I mean, we could say that about science fiction. We could say about that, about mm-hmm. action adventure. We could say that even about some horror, like, you know, it's, that's just fiction. That's how well, a lot of fiction the, operates. I'm sorry. It's a sign of the times, right? Like mm-hmm. if you think about music, right? I, I learned something like a long time ago. It's always stuck with me. If you look at music, when we're going through like hard times, like the, like society is going through hard times we tend to get a lot of like very upbeat kind of Mm -hmm. fast songs whereas when we're doing well in society and you know we're not really having as many problems and things are kind of going easier it's like the you know you start getting more ballads you start getting more like Mm -hmm. love songs more mellow songs Mm -hmm. because it's what Mm -hmm. society needs right like i don't think right now we can take a lot of depressing songs no yeah you know just like I think movies right now, we really kind of need that di- diversion away from what's going on. Right, right. And I mean, I like I, I, to your point, Ash, and I understand what you're saying. Like, you know, we have had this conversation of before, like in some way, shape or form in the past. And mm-hmm. I think we both agree on this on some level. Right. But I like, yeah, I just kind of think that there's also uh, the denial of one aspect of this, which is that, you know, again, people's lives are hard. And like Mia said, people want escapism. And like, Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes it's almost laughable. And I don't want to be too disrespectful because I'm also defensive of Alan Moore a lot of times too, but it's almost laughable when uh, 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 someone who dabbles in stories about like, you know, Cthulhu and, you know, uh, as much as he hates to admit it, superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. Like is trying to give people a reality check. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like- Like, isn't he profiting off of the group he has a problem with? Well, I mean, he's not on a lot of, well, that's also, that's where I defend Alan Moore a lot because he's actually not, which I have to respect him for. Like he, he put his money where his mouth is and he said Mm -hmm. like, I'm not with this. And he denied uh, his, uh, he denied his rights to watch him and he's denied his rights to like a lot of the stuff Mm -hmm. that he created in the superhero genre. but anyway, uh, you guys can debate that more if you want to. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, but I'm going to flip it over to NYCC Metaverse. Did you guys get mm-hmm. a chance to catch up to any of these things that were going on in the uh, New York Comic Con Metaverse? 
you know, I didn't like get a chance to catch any of the panels, but I did mm. go through like and read some like recap articles and like kind of try to hit the high points since I didn't mm. really get a chance to do it myself. Um, I'm going to just take this over right now. It's mine. Go for it. Go for um, it. One of the things I'm super excited about that came out of this was more information about Tales of the Walking Dead, which is kind of their mm. like anthology spinoff that's coming following like the conclusion of The Walking Dead in 2022 after their 11th season. But so Scott M. Gimple mm. gave more information about what you can expect in this anthology series. So super exciting. He did say that some of these anthologies will focus on these established kind of like original characters. He called them from The Walking Dead. Um, and then also introduce some new characters and explore their stories in this universe. Mm. Um, and even maybe take it a step farther and, and show some people's future post season 11, which I'm super excited about. I love kind of like the world building aspect of this because this world is so massive and they've shown that with like fear the walking dead. There's so much opportunity here. And I'm interested to see kind of maybe what happens between episodes or before, like they link up with certain characters, what they were doing before or maybe after they left. So I'm yeah. excited for this to come out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually down with that. Like I, I, I kind of enjoy zombie stories where it's kind of, you get to know the characters a little bit before and even sometimes after mm -hmm. like the fallout, you know? So what about you, Mia? Mia, didn't you do a metaverse uh, panel? Didn't you do like a cosplay thing but like yeah. earlier? Yeah, so it was Ooh. earlier, not this one that happened um, just recently, but the one before that I actually did a panel on kind of cosplay 101 and stuff, uh, you know, that you'd want to have in your arsenal as a cosplayer. So I, I oh, always God. kind of like their their cosplay content that they have. But again, like, like Ashton, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I like, looked at some of the articles and the recaps and there were two that I was like really interested in. One was uh, the reunion of Tenacious D. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Which was really that's cool. Right. <laughs> and then a panel on Ready Player Two with um, oh. the author Ernest uh, Klein and then Klein, it was yeah. uh, hosted by Will Wheaton. So Okay, all oh, right. Awesome. Interesting. So huh. they're talking about the first movie and the first book and then <laughs> kind of what might be going on with the second book. So Ooh. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna give any info. No, no, that's they gave <laughs> that much info. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least not enough <laughs> that I wanted. I'm like, give me the book. I didn't know. I like I remember hearing that Ready Player Two was in more in the works, but I didn't know how far along it was. So that's actually pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Um my big takeaway uh, from uh, Metaverse actually is not that big of a takeaway at all. Uh, it's just the fact that uh, when they did the Ten of Swords panel, it seemed like the all the writers had a hard time describing the plot. <laughs> cool, awesome, love that. <laughs> <laughs> like that seemed to it seemed like they had difficulty with it. Now I'm gonna say right now, I actually just started reading Tennis Swords all the way through. Well, not all the way through, but up to like where we are where we are as of release day today. And it's actually pretty good and a lot of fun. But like um I just thought that was really interesting that, you know, even with a streamlined attempt at the X-Men universe, the X-Men are still kind of convoluted no matter how you how you spin it. So that's just my big takeaway. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the people who did Inktober submissions. Um, so we're, of course, we're doing Inktober props. I want to give a shout out to Gretchen, who told us last year that we're stupid for not doing this, and we should. And so we did. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, and so we've been doing, we did a new prompt. And so we've got a few new submissions this week. Uh, Mount Ole. I want to say Ole. Uh, he did it. Uh, this was from day 11 and like, actually these are all from day 11. Uh, they did a mummy one. He did kind of a traditional mummy, but then we also got, uh, another, uh, like kind of more of like a, uh, animated anime inspired mummy version mm -hmm. two from, uh, Anthony. And then I love this last one. This is a friend of mine, Darren Jackson, Ooh. DJ, and he did Boris Karloff and he does some amazing portraits and yeah, I mean, just look at that. And that's I can't not believe like that's drawn. That looks perfect. Right, right. Like I mean, like he did. It's not like he took some tracing paper and put it over the screen, right? Like I mean, this is, this is legit. Like he did this, yeah. like you know, by hand, and it's just phenomenal. And like you can definitely check out more of his artwork. We might have DJ on the show just because he's also kind of a riot. So it might be interesting to have him come on. I think. And then you and him, then you and him can talk about Star Wars, and like you guys can have, you both can rage quit. It'll we can be great. enable each other. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so we've been going on for a minute here. Let's move on to what's the comic shops. Uh, what are you picking up this week, guys? Let us know in the comments below. If you don't know what's out this week, you should. But you, if you don't know, head on to refuseworld.com, new releases, and just slash new releases and take a look. Uh, but let's do it. What's at comic shops? Uh, 
All right, Mia, I'm going to let you go first. What is your pick this week uh, for new releases? So I am going to go with Killjoys. Um, So I actually got to talk to um, the artist, I mean, the the writer, which Mm -hmm. was Sean Simon, who wrote this along with Gerard Way Mm -hmm. and um, got super excited about it. You know, it's uh, this this great story and they're kind of bringing it back where it's the same character, but different story. uh, and, And I'm just really excited to pick this up. So. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I was gonna say a little bias there because you definitely. Yeah, I know. I, I can't, I can't say that there's not a little bit of bias on that. <laughs> what about you, Ashton? What is your pick this week? Okay, so I'm going with Katara and the Pirate Silver from Dark Horse. It's a okay. Avatar: The Last Airbender graphic novel. Welcome okay. to Previews World Weekly, where you can predict what I'll pick every single week. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. just to give some background on this, um, there is there's a set of graphic novels that expand the Avatar the Last Airbender lore. So those are kind of uh, sequels after the uh, series concludes. So it kind of goes on to show, you know, Aang as the Avatar, um, like Zuko as the Fire Lord, all of that. This is not that. These are a different approach to it. So these kind of jump back into the series and there are these standalone graphic novels that kind of show you what the characters are doing Uh, between their adventures, between episodes, and kind of fill out their backstories a little bit more. So here, Katara and the rest of Team Avatar get ambushed by Fire Nation troops, and she ends up separated from Sokka, Aang, and Toph, so she has to kind of find her way back. Um, And to do so, she has to kind of align herself with unlikely allies, which, based on the title, you can probably assume are pirates, which is really interesting, (laughs) because she has a run-in with pirates early on in the series when she steals their waterbending scroll. Um... So I'm excited for this. You guys know I'm like super like way in on Avatar. It's really good timing. It's actually brilliant on Dark Horse's part to capitalize on like all of the Avatar excitement right now and put this story Mm. out. So definitely get into that and you can find out more about Katara. I'm trying to make this short, but it's already long winded. I could talk about it all day. Troy (laughs) saved me. (laughs) It's it's quite all right. No, it's all right. I mean, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. There is like a lot of like Avatar excitement for nothing really new to be talked about. Like I find that really interesting. Like it's funny too, because people were more excited about uh, Korra and Avatar ending up on Netflix in the Netflix show (laughs) that was circulating around that time. So yeah, very interesting. Um, my pick this week, uh, whew, I got like, I'm trying not to actually say the title, but it's Dracula <laughs> mother. It's a hardcover and it's by Alex DeCampi and Erica Henderson. Uh, DeCampi wrote probably my favorite Archie story of the last, like, I don't know, like probably all, I honestly probably my favorite Archie story of it for, forever. Archie versus predator. Um, and so she kind of has like a clear affinity for horror and B movies and action. And so she's done a, she does a great job of kind of finding that nice balance. And this one is kind of like, seems like it's a, almost an homage to movies like Blackula. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely something worth checking out. And also something I noticed is Erica Henderson, was never a big fan of her artwork when she was on Squirrel Girl, right? But mm-hmm. after she left, left Squirrel Girl, her art style has evolved. And like, I feel like she was kind of trying to maintain sort of like a, almost like a uh, all ages kind of style for Squirrel Girl, because now she's mm-hmm. kind of going all out. Not only is she going all out just in terms, of, in terms of how she's drawing, but also the type of story she's doing as well. She just did a book called Bang, which was like this action crime thing. And now she's doing this sort of like B-movie horror thing too. So she's definitely branching out and like her artwork's better for it, I think. So definitely check mm-hmm. that out. Dracula Mother <laughs> from Image <laughs> Comics. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll show you guys a trailer for it later in the show too. I'm proud of myself because I didn't say the entire title. Um, okay, so big ticket items this week. What do we got this week, Johnny? Amazing Spider-Man turns 50. And you're probably going like, wait a minute, Amazing Spider-Man already turned 50. Yes, it has. It's yeah. done it before. But you know, Marvel's got the legacy numbering. And so this is a continuation of Nick Spencer's run and the big 5-0 for the Amazing Spider-Man. And as you can see, uh, the Green Goblin has been a big, has uh, factored in a big way to the series uh, in the recent issues. So I expect like uh, everything to kind of come to a head with Goblin and Spider-Man. I, I'm, I'm more than certain of that. Uh, what else we got? Commanders in Crisis. This is a cool one from Steve Orlando. Definitely check this out. Cool like uh, action adventure sci-fi superhero thing that he's got going on in Image Comics. Definitely a lot of fun. Also love the artwork. They got some great variant covers for this one, which is also pretty cool. 
Uh, Once in Future, a very popular one from Boom Studios. If you love sword and sorcery, if you love magic and monsters, if you love Harry Potter and uh, Narnia and stuff like this, this is the book for you. Like you definitely want to check this out. And it's uh, Karen Gillan, who's always gets a seal approval from me. So definitely enjoy that. Definitely check it out this week. Die. Namite, number one, uh, from Dynamite <laughs> Comics. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the impression this is a zombie book from Dynamite. It looks like uh, it's going to be the heroes of the Dynamite universe getting the uh, the zombie treatment. Like, you know, it's basically going to be the, them versus undead hordes. And more than likely, a few of them are going to get bit in the process, which is going to make it harder for everybody else. So definitely check that out. That's <laughs> this week. Uh, the Devil's Red Bride. This is cool. I kind of glossed over this initially because I wasn't sure what it was. But it's cool because it's kind of a revenge tale about this character right here on the screen. It's kind of like Lady Snowblood, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. So definitely check that out. It seems like it's kind of an homage to that movie specifically. So yeah, Devil's Red Bride from Vault Comics. Definitely worth taking a look at. Ashton, can you help me out with this? Is it Leth? Is that what I'm supposed to say? The Crow Leth? Leth? That's what I was thinking. I was thinking Leth. Left. Okay, I'm going to say left, and I apologize to you guys if I get this wrong. But, you know, of course, the Crow franchise goes beyond the Brendan Lee movie. It goes beyond the Eric Draven initial story arc that was released in the late 80s, early 90s. And so a new character has taken up the mantle of the Crow. So definitely check this out. This is from IDW, and it continues the story of the Crow. Perfect for Halloween, actually. So there you go. Uh, Lumberjanes, the original graphic novel, Volume 3, is out this week. Uh, I'm actually not sure if this is a, a, a collection of recent books. I think this is like a collection mm-hmm. of recent books and not an original graphic novel. Oh, it does. It says right there, original graphic novel. What am I talking about? Good one. Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> but that's also from Boom Studios this week. Definitely check it out. <laughs> Maybe I should check it out, too, because I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, Blue Period. Uh, Kadash has got a new Volume 1 coming out, dropping this week. And, of course, it's a manga. Definitely check that out. Blue Period uh, from Kadasha Comics. And... Fangirl manga. Uh, Rainbow Rao, who did uh, the um, who did uh, the Runaway series for Marvel, has a new book, and it kind of seems like it's somewhat autobiographical. <laughs> right. So definitely worth checking out. And it's also uh, I, I can't see the name right there, but I think it's Sam Mags. There you go. Is also involved with this one. So definitely check that out. And that is uh, dropping from Viz Media. Mm-hmm. And so now we're going to show you guys a trailer for Dracula Mother. <laughs> uh, check this out. This is from Image Comics. This is in comic shops today. And that was Dracula Mother from <laughs> Alex DeCamp and Eric Anderson. That's in comic shops today from Image Comics. And I'm actually told that we, me, has sparked uh, some conversation here in the uh, comments. Uh-oh. What's going on here what in the comments? What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, first of all, uh, complimenting DJ is Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff looks awesome. It definitely does. Hopefully, DJ does some more for Inktober. Uh, what about the 60s? Tough times? There's great songs. Yeah. That, that's actually the first thing I thought of was actually the 60s. I actually think that supports what you said, me. I don't think that actually goes against well, I mean, what yeah, you said. Yeah, so if there's tough times, you know, there's going to be some really good songs mm-hmm. um, coming out of it. So, mm-hmm. it, I, yeah, I don't know. I sparked this conversation. I'm like, take this up with my, like, intro to popular music professor. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I don't know. This is what I was told, but it makes sense. No, I think you have a point, though, because, yeah. like, a lot of the, you know, the free love movement was going on at the time. So, yes, of course, you got songs about war and you got songs about like you know race relations etc cetera, et cetera. but you also got a lot of love 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 you know yeah. <laughs> all the all the leaves are brown and the skies are gray that sort of thing uh simon linton says 70s got easier and the music died lm was that in my opinion sorry got okay. better again in the 80s oh, okay i mean i 70, guess so the disco era i mean that was part of the 70s i don't think that was all uh, of the 70s. 80s music was not atrocious hold on kenny yeah I'm <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's I weird alive. yeah i can't co-sign that kenny 90s was even worse well kenny what do you like let us know in the comments hold on. 90s was the 
birth of the boy band. I'm getting upset. Okay, now you just supported you just supported the statement, Ashton. The oh, Bastard Simon. Boys are icon. Hold on. <laughs> oh wait, Simon says not in the UK. We had ska, two tone, in the beginning of grunge in the '90s, right? So yeah, what are you talking I, about? What's going on here? Okay, Kenny, wow, this is like a back and forth. I'm from UK, and I'll give you Sky and Two Tone, but Grunge, please. Oh, come on. Oh, There's nothing what? wrong with Grunge. As a Seattleite, I had to take so much offense to that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, yeah, I took offense to that, too, and I'm not even from Seattle. Yeah, that's that's too much. You went too far there, Kenny. You lost you lost the entire room. <laughs> come on, Kenny, get but out of here. it's all subjective, right? Because it's like, what it is. is good music to each person? Of, of course, this is also true. Yeah, this, uh, I think I think sure. your I think your statement's telling me. I think you. I'll, I'll back you up on that one for sure. Thanks. All right. So we already <laughs> got a little bit of people yelling at each other. You guys ready to yell at each other some more? Actually, I don't think that this week is Always. all that controversial. This week's not that controversial. You've done worse. <laughs> yeah, we've done worse. We've definitely done worse. This is not like our superheroes fascist controversial. This is just Ooh. a fun discussion. So Ash is going to take over, and this is going to be an asinine argument with Ashton, but. It might be pretty chill. We'll see. Okay. Well, I, my superpower is turning anything into an S9 argument. So I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So our question this week is about character redemption. We asked you guys, what is your favorite redemption story in comics? And did that character deserve to be redeemed? So let's check out some of your answers and then we'll give our opinions. Right. Rob said Magneto taking over the Xavier school in X-Men 200. Yeah. I see that. I was going to go for that one. I was like, that's too easy. Low hanging fruit. Uh, Daniel said, I like Flash Thompson going from a bully to Peter's close friend and ally. Yeah, definitely up there. Brian said, Bizarro. Superman realized Bizarro was a good guy at heart, just a bit cub. I mean, backwards. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did. That was, a little, that was a little Bizarro joke. Okay, I see. Very clever. I, I was like approaching it. that and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to pronounce this. <laughs> Um, Mickey said, Thunderbolts by a mile. It showed that it is mm. not easy and there is always temptation. But in the end, right is right. There you go. Awesome. I love those, actually. Yeah, Thunderbolts are definitely high on that list, too. There's a lot of Marvel there. I saw a lot of Superior mm -hmm. Spider-Man, which I definitely mm -hmm. agree with. Um, definitely saw Magneto a few times. But what about you two? I'm going to start with Mia. Is there a character that, that had that redemption arc that just made you go, wow, yes. this I didn't know I needed this, but this is what I needed. <laughs> So I, I was originally thinking about like in comics and, and all I could come up with it was, was X-Men, but I feel like there's a lot of always back and forth with characters. Mm -hmm. Like one, mm -hmm. one part they're good, then they go bad, then they go good mm -hmm. again and back and forth. So mine, I actually took kind of from comics, kind of from TV um, mm -hmm. because they have the stranger things comics. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went with Ooh, Steve okay. um, from stranger things. That's actually one of my favorite ones. Like recently that mm -hmm. I've, I've really been in love with. Cause like the first season he was kind of the, the jerk that was writing about how, you know, his, his girlfriend or ex, you know, was like slutty and stuff like that. And it was just kind of a jerk. And then, and then he's become kind of like the, the like bad boy turned good babysitter, sweet mm -hmm. guy that everyone loves. And you're like, if anyone touches Steve, I will hurt you. Whereas like the first season, I was like, Steve's such a jerk. I hate him. Um, so for me, that one's great because he's really become um, a true hero in, in the sense of what's happened to him now. <laughs> I love his sweet face. I look. I love the juxtaposition of him in the sailor suit and like <laughs> animated man. Like costume. he's a true hero. <laughs> <laughs> Serving up that ice cream and kicking Demogorgon butt, you know. <laughs> Watching all the little kids. It's cute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to jump in, Ashton, and, and I'm mm -hmm. going to let you it. go last because this is your topic. Um, yeah, you know what? Mine, uh, I went back and forth. I'm definitely wearing a Magneto was right t-shirt, first of all. I just oh, want to point God. that out. That was just for this show. I know. It's a hard <laughs> stance. Um, but uh, the one that really kind of like instantly came to mind that actually surprised me uh, was Dr. Doom in Secret War, um, which is interesting because it's kind of a redemption arc, but Jonathan Hickman doesn't really give you the full satisfaction, mm -hmm. which would betray the character of seeing Doom go full hero, even right. though he technically saves the universe. Um, 
And it's interesting because like, he's kind of like, it's almost like the, the genie in the bottle scenario, right? Like he got everything he wished for. Reed Richards is gone. Sue Storm is like, you know, is, is, at his, is, is his ally, is at his back. Uh, he is the most respected sorceress in all of the world. And on top of that, people, people pretty much he saved, uh, he tried, he saved what was left of humanity. So he ends up being the, the, mm-hmm. the just, the just individual that he has always thought he, that he was in his mind. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, uh, the cause, and it's like, it's almost like Dr. Doom's ego was always going to get in his way. You know what I mean? So right. at the end of the day, it ultimately is the thing that becomes his undoing as well. But you it also, I forgot he gets his face back, which is also a big part of this too. And it's just really weird because as a reader, you kind of enjoy seeing Dr. Doom be a real bastard, right? Like mm-hmm. you just kind of enjoy it. You just love it. And then you get this story arc where he kind of goes through the motions of a superhero or a hero arc, but he's clearly the bad guy. <laughs> like they go through right. all these motions of a hero arc, you know, it's like the triumph and the failure and like, you know, the, the long climb up to victory, you know, and you're kind of there with him because there's something kind of likable about him, even though he's clearly like the greatest villain of, of like all villains, like, you know, and I'm just saying that that's how he looks at him in his mind. Um, so yeah, that really stuck out to me. Definitely secret war. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I just, it still resonates with me to this day. Cause I'm like, man, that was actually a really fun. That was like a really great crossover that Marvel did. And they really did something unexpected there. So yeah, Dr. Doom secret war. That's my, that's my jam. Would what you about say you, he's Ashley? more of an anti-hero than like a outright hero? You know, I'd like I'd even hesitate to say that because of the way the story ends up, and I don't okay. want to give. I mean, it, it, the story came out back in 2012, so I mean, it's still kind of, it's you know, it's kind of, uh, kind of old at this point. But like, you know, ultimately his hubris is what betrays him, which is what always betrays him. So it kind of works out in the end that he's not the hero, okay. but he did a really good thing in his. In his own, in his own weird, unique way, I guess mm. is the best way to put it. Oh, like I wouldn't call him an anti hero. Yeah, it's very complicated, which I, which is what I like about it because, it, you know, it complicates your feelings about it as it's happening, but you can't stop reading it. So. Okay, yeah. I have a lot more questions, but we'd be we'd be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's all good. What about you, Ashton? Um, okay, so I, I have kind of also a complicated answer here. Uh, so when we focused this in this, okay, so this conversation was born out of a larger, like nerd question that I'm going to ask both of you guys in a minute. But okay. when we narrowed the scope onto comics, the first thing that came to mind for me was Negan, you guys know, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hate complicated, um, like gut reaction to this, because on the one hand, I almost like, I almost wanted to say that, like, Negan didn't deserve his redemption because of like all of the blatant murder of Rick's people and like specifically (laughs) what he did to Glenn. I was so like, like I felt like that was personal. Like I was like personally upset about that. But then (laughs) I had a moment and I was like, I can't sit here and say that like Negan's not redeemable because that makes Rick not redeemable because they do the same things all of the time. Like Rick Mm. does a lot of unnecessary murder too. (laughs) I love how there's like a tier. There's necessary murder and unnecessary murder. I mean, and they both do. They both do both kinds of murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's. I think if nothing else, like I really like Negan's redemption arc because it specifically goes through Carl, and Carl's my favorite character in the Walking Dead universe, mm-hmm. and I like that. Um, Carl is interesting to me because he's like still has that faith like a child sometimes, but he's also very hardened by this world. So Mm -hmm. I think the fact that Negan's able to like capitalize on that little bit of humanity that Carl has left is what makes his redemption arc like particularly compelling to me. I don't think I've answered the question at all. I've just said a bunch of stuff. No, I think, I mean, (laughs) well, first of all, it's your question. So you get to change the rules. I mean, that's just how it works. Um, but no, I like, I, again, I think it's, you know, I think when it's complicated, that makes it even more interesting. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, one of the things I, oh God, one of the things I did not like, well, there's such a thing as overcomplicating it. Right. Like one of the things I didn't like is like, you know, I'm a, I joke and I'm a closeted Buffy fan. Right. Right. (laughs) And so one of my favorite redemption arcs is actually Spike because he kind of goes from like this, I mean, he's already kind of like this, 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 uh, uh, 
God, what's the best way to put this? Like he's he's kind of like this lovelorn, like you know, like sap. But at the base mm -hmm. of uh, initially when we're introduced to him, he's just kind of like this ruthless killer on top of that, right? Yeah. Probably, but no more ruthless than Angel, who already has redemption when the story starts off. Um, but then they kind of do some stuff in the later seasons that overly complicates it, that makes it a little weird, mm -hmm. you know. And I want, uh, you know, Mia might yeah. know what I'm talking about, but like, yeah, it just kind of gets a little iffy, but. <laughs> I always thought that that was actually pretty interesting. So yeah, I think complicated yeah. is good. It's like my relationship with Alan Moore. It's complicated. <laughs> complicated <laughs> but necessary. <laughs> complicated but necessary. So the question that this Anybody, kind of like uh, mm -hmm. was born out of, my brother and I were having a discussion like a couple weeks back and I like can't get over it. So that's why I felt the need to make this a previous World Weekly question. Mm -hmm. We were talking about like character redemption specifically in terms of like Darth Vader and whether or not he was redeemed by the end of Return of the Jedi and whether or not he mm. deserved that redemption. Mm -hmm. And my brother said that, like, he felt like Darth Vader was redeemed, like, nearly exclusively in Luke's eyes, but, like, not in terms of the larger Star Wars universe. <laughs> not not in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, because he didn't feel like killing the Emperor, like, made up for all of that space genocide that happened a couple years earlier. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I want to know what, how you guys feel about Darth Vader, his redemption. I don't know. What about you, Mia? What I was going to say exactly what you said, whereas, like, as, as far as Luke, it's like he... He he kind of saw the humanity in him, I guess, at the mm -hmm. at the very end and kind of understood. But no one else knows that. Like right. <laughs> that's true. No, no, he's still the jerk that tried to blow up everything. Like, right, yeah. No, he made the Death Star. No, he's not redeemed at all. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it, it depends on whose eyes you're looking mm -hmm. through. And for the most part, ninety nine point nine percent of people still think, you know, he's horrible. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, ask the people of Alderaan of Darth Vader's, like, a, <laughs> right. a nice Well, there are no people from Alderaan. <laughs> there are no old people from Alderaan, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got. I think we we talked about. We definitely talked about this on a, a previous episode about uh, mm -hmm. Vader's redemption arc, and like I think we both were in agreement that like that's kind of like I think the fatal flaw of the prequels. Like you can nitpick nitpick certain things and kind sure. of be like, oh, this is this is good, that's good, this is good, that's good. But ultimately, I kind of feel like it. They failed at the big thing that they were supposed to do, which was like kind of set up the redemption arc that's already in the original trilogy. You know what I mean? Right. Like to kind of give you like kind of like a, a wide range of reasons of like, okay, he went in the wrong direction, but mm -hmm. it's okay. You know, and like I don't really <laughs> yeah, once he starts slaughtering kids, it's kinda of like, okay. Oh well, boy, yeah. We're, we've crossed yeah. the line. <laughs> yeah, I think we've crossed the line here. And like, yeah, it's just yeah, it just he gets also really has iffy. A moment in like the second one where he murders all of those people when he's trying to find his mom. He more like murders everyone else. Oh, the, the he's like, I didn't even feel bad about it. Right, the Tuscan Raiders or whatever. Isn't the Tuscan yeah. Raiders? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. See, I just I yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. That's a party foul on on Anakin's part and George Lucas's <laughs> part too. <laughs> no, no redemption for you. Rises to the level of a party <laughs> <laughs> A galactic level party foul. There we go. That. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anything else before we, we close out this uh, oh bit about god. redemption? I need to shout out Prince Zuko because I adore him. And as far as I'm concerned, like that's the gold standard for redemption arcs. So yeah, that's yeah. my last comment. There you go. I had yeah, a right. feeling you were going to bring that, that mm -hmm. up. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I tried to sidestep it because like I noticed in the com, I found the comment you're talking about where someone tried to say Prince Zuko and then someone else was like, that's not in the comic. So I tried to start with a comic and then circle back to it because <laughs> it is a great redemption arc. It is it brilliant. Is. It is. It is. It's a good one. So, okay, cool. I mean, look, let us know what you guys think in the comments. If you're, if you have a, a hardcore opinion about this, we want to hear it because like, yeah, this is a, mm -hmm. Redemption, I guess, is pretty subjective, isn't it? I think that's what we kind of came away with here. Yeah. I think it's you know, only in the eyes of your of your uh, of your of your Jedi son will they will you really oh. know for sure? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> actually, you know it's weird too. We never really figure out if Leia actually forgives Vader. <gasps> oh, no. that's true. Like I'm not even up in... for the next four days. <laughs> <laughs> the like not even. I don't even think in the sequel trilogy they really acknowledge that. Like it's sort of like. It's more like Leia's attitude is like, yeah, that's the thing that happened. Yeah. Yeah, Darth Vader would still want to rule the galaxy. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that's Waldo, you might be right about that. That's probably be, true. That's probably true. That's, I mean, that was kind of like his whole angle, right? I mean, he literally, actually, you know what? 
in Return of the Jedi, I think it's Return of the Jedi, he says to him, like, hey, let's let's ditch the Emperor and, like, let's rule the galaxy together, you and yeah, father yeah. and son. <laughs> he says that straight out, so <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, okay, what is this week's poll, Ash? What's going on over on Halloween Comic Fest? Okay, so this week's poll, um, I felt the need to terrorize myself, I guess, with this one. <laughs> so I asked all of our followers on Halloween Comic Fest, what seemingly innocuous thing is creepier between clowns and dolls? Um, <laughs> somebody commented on this and they were like, you know what the answer is? Clown dolls. And I was like, I'm Ooh. leaving. Oh, I had one as a kid. I don't know why. Oh, no. Why? I was terrified of it, though. But, like, were now you... dolls are horrifying. Were you the... Wait, was the... What, why were you living in poltergeist? Like, what is going on here, me? Because <laughs> the 80s, 90s. <laughs> oh, my God. A clown doll. Like, that is like, wow. No. That is no, it used to play music and then its head would, like, roll. It's really weird. It, oh. Yeah. Why what? they made that? Like it would just no. kind of like roll, like like the warm up exercise. <laughs> but no, what's funny is I was on the, I'm in this group on Facebook that that talks about like finding stuff at thrift stores, and someone found one, oh, and no. they were like, "Oh my god, I used to have this doll, but it was all broken." And she's like, "I think," that, and it looked like it was possessed because the neck would not go around right. I was like. Mm -mm. I like, put that back sure. in the thrift yep. store. Back. Back. Too late. She touched it. It's like demon spirits gonna follow her forever. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrifying. I think that's the worst. <laughs> the worst outcome. Why? Oh God. Is that? Why? Is okay, that it? Really scary. It was not like that. Oh, okay. Oh, that God. is I'm really so, horrible. I'm what sorry. Why? I, I, I could not resist. I have nightmares of this. <laughs> I hate this so much right now. Like I can't even begin to explain it. And that's uh, why I'm going to leave it up for the rest of the show. Please, oh, my God. Please don't do me. Like, no. I don't even know why I did that. Like, I picked this poll, and I was like, you know what would be fun? Two things that I hate. Dolls and clowns. Lord. Actually, so who is what is the what is the end result here? Like what's going on here? So actually, well, I guess first of all, let's let's go down the line. So I'm gonna side with clowns. Oh, because I, I think they're just hundred percent. That's they're just absolutely low, worse. Mm -mm. Um what about you, Mia? Clowns, I feel like aren't as scary as like porcelain dolls, like the ones that mm. like the really old porcelain mm -hmm. dolls that just have those eyes that stare at like uh. mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Those come alive at night. I'm pretty determined that they do. They do. Ooh. Like, I, I don't think that's even up for debate. That's like, <laughs> that's sick. All right, Johnny, you want to come back in here real quick? Production Jan Johnny, uh, production manager, Johnny Rose. No, so when you're saying like dolls that come alive at night, are you talking about ones like this? Like <laughs> Johnny, I hate this right now. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's go and find the answer to the poll. So, Johnny, where do you fall on this? Well, let's see. The vote here here. What? what? Being dolls. That's what? wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. That's, clowns are, that's foolish. That's horrible. Who are clowns for? Can someone tell me what is the demographic? I Kids? Think... Nah. No. 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 What? What? No. Yes. No. No. That's where no. the fear comes from. <laughs> Yeah, that's where it starts. <laughs> Every family is like, we're just going to get like, you know, a clown for their birthday party. And then for the rest of their lives, they're Ashton. That's where I it really starts. Just <laughs> 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 the horrified of clowns. Oh, my God. But why? I don't understand. Like, I was never afraid of clowns when I was a kid. I just, I mean, I was, I, well, I shouldn't say I was never afraid of them, but there is something kind of unsettling about them. Yeah. What like, about I it, though? What, what is unsettling? I just, they, I don't know. Like, I don't trust anything that that's happy. That that's I happy without, like, medi without yeah. medication. <laughs> Pessimism. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. They're, like, sad on the inside, but smiling on the outside. That Side. is no bueno. I mean, actually, you know what? Here you go. The trump card right here is John Wayne Gacy. Like, that's it. Like, that's the whole thing. Like it just after that it's a done deal. Like I mean, like you can never look at clowns clowns again once you realize oh. a serial killer literally dressed up as a clown to kill people. Like I mean, it's no. just it's done. Um, have you seen Child's Play? Chucky, Chucky, see Chucky was always just funny to me. Is he a clown? No, no he's, he's a, a it's a doll. He's a doll. Oh, I could, but I, I feel like you could punt him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I think that's. I mean, no, I, I feel like you totally could punch fair. a clown too, but. Kids, don't try that at home. Yeah, don't do that. Mm. No punching. 
We do not. Don't punch the clown. The previous world weekly. <laughs> I think the big problem with clowns is they've been so bastardized over like the course of time. <laughs> right. Uh, like not to be vulgar, but like they maybe they were innocuous and a kids thing at one time, but now they're like this staple of like murder horror. And they're like an entire genre of itself, and that's what I'm not okay with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I so I blame it on an insane clown posse. The same. I mean, that works too. I think that I think all these things truthfully factor in. Like I think Stephen King, I think John mm-hmm. Wayne Gacy, yes, even the insane clown posse, all of these things create like the perfect storm of hell that is clowns. We made suppo- clowns evil. We made clowns evil. Simon Linton, yeah. suppose it depends on the subject of the doll. That's actually a fair point. Actually, I co sign that actually. Absolutely. So, all right. No, Johnny, so you fall on what side, Johnny? Oh, um, I fall on this side. Stop it. <laughs> Clown dolls. Clown dolls. No. <laughs> Ooh, that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is the absolute worst. <laughs> no, this is the absolute oh best. God. I can't oh. see Ashton in person these days. We have to quarantine, so I get to have to torment her from a distance. There you go. That's so, how it works. Socially distant tormenting. Sorry, Ashton. Uh, anyway, back to the actual poll. Um, clowns versus dolls. I, I think personally, dolls are creepier. Um, I grew up like, you know, my parents taking me to the circus and stuff like that, and clowns never scared me. It wasn't mm-hmm. until, you know, in recent years when people were mm-hmm. like, oh, there's murderous clowns roaming the woods for some reason, you know. That, that oh, happened. God. Yeah. That was a thing that happened that we all was like, like a year about. or two ago. Just I, I, you know, I still think that that was Warner Brothers trolling all of us. What, because it was coming out? Because it was coming out. I still think that that was like the most brilliant marketing campaign like ever. I don't think that that was actually a real thing. Of what or clowns that were like lurking in the woods I mean, people? there's also that too, Mia. I'll give you that. Like, I might also just not want it to be. I live, <laughs> right. I live a little bit too far into the suburbs at this point. I'm like, yeah, I, I would kill a clown if I saw it, saw it in the woods. <laughs> But all right, there you have it, guys. I guess uh, if you if you disagree or if you're if you're pro doll, please explain why in the comments because I don't get it at all. I'm sorry, guys. You're by yourself on that one. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Um, what do we else we got, Ashton? What's going on with Halloween Comic Fest? Didn't you do just do an interview with uh, Anna Mia? I did. Yeah. So yeah. For Halloween Comic Fest, we're doing like a cosplay series this year. And we just interviewed Anamia, so she told us all about like her creative process, how she picks her cosplays, all that fun stuff. So it's on our website right now, and you can go look through it. She also gave us some of her photos, which are amazing. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, what's this week's comic shop shout out? I don't know because I failed to write it down. So I'm hoping John okay. has it ready. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. This week's comic shop shout out is from Travis and it goes to cosmic cosmic comics. There you go. Um, and that's in, that's actually in our backyard. That's lithicum. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. It's here in Maryland. Right. Yeah. I actually didn't even know this until I like, you know, pulled up the images and I was like, Oh wait, this is here. I got to check this place out. So yeah. Okay, shout cool. out to Travis. Thank you very much, Travis. Thank you very much. So Mia, it's not like you're you're going to disappear or you're going to you're dying or anything like that, right? Like, I mean, you're going to still be on our program. You're still hosting the panel. People yeah. are still going to see you every Wednesday at What's That Comic Shops. But we will miss you. We'll miss seeing you in the yeah, studio, of course. I know. So, an attempt to be really sappy. Can you regale us with any memories of uh, <laughs> of your time here, previous it. world? Oh, <laughs> um, let's see. The day. I, some of my favorite moments are, and, and Johnny knows this because he made a blooper reel out of it, was the day <laughs> that I could not say Kotobukiya Bishoujo because I've been <laughs> saying it wrong my whole life. Oh, wow. And I just couldn't get it out of my head. And so we were doing a video and I, I fumbled it at least like 30 times. And I've never fumbled <laughs> that much. And I was like, I just can't do this. <laughs> I'll just find the, um, the blooper reel and, and post it again. Yeah. Um, oh, like coming that in. That was like, priceless. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like usually these these reads that when we're filming for the catalog video will take five minutes or so. I swear we were shooting that for like two hours. <laughs> it felt like oh, wow. that bad. it felt like forever. <laughs> Dang, thanks. Hi, anime here to give you a look at the upcoming Kotobukiya Bishu Bishibu. Bishibu. Bishimishimibia. <laughs> it, it was like that scene, like um, 
I, I don't know if it was Liar Liar or yeah, I think it was no, it was uh, Bruce Almighty with Steve mm. Carell when he's trying to read the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> I will read whatever is on the tele. I really will, unless it's that word, and then I can't. Do it. Can't do it. Cannot and then I did it. it once, and I got through it, and then I said Captain uh, America instead of Captain Marvel, and I was like, God dang it. <laughs> 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 no, my actually my favorite. Every time we uh, do a Mongopedia video too, I'm just sort of like Mia. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm gonna just let you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, like, what fun words has Troy given me to say right? today on this video? <laughs> Literally, I'm like, this isn't my problem anymore, Mia. You figure. <laughs> <it out." laughs> so rude. I'm like, thanks, Troy. All right, Google. How do I right. pronounce this guy's name? <laughs> Um, actually, I, I I wonder if I think we only ran that blooper reel on the previous World Weekly, our end of the year previous World Weekly episode, but it might actually also be on our YouTube, maybe. We need if to you find guys... all the blooper reels, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Johnny Johnny has every sort of like he's got all sorts of like a uh, uh, blackmail friendly like you know <laughs> material for us. I'm sure. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should be scared of. Johnny instead out. Of, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> oh. Instead of clowns or dolls, we should all be scared of Johnny out. Yeah, right. <laughs> the entire episode is cursed. <laughs> but that's like coming into the studio and like yeah. hanging out with you guys and like taking lunch breaks and and watching like random things in the break room. Yeah, right. The um the claw machine that just took my money every single time. I never won anything out of that dang claw machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that thing. So there's like a in the office. There's like this claw machine, and it's got cool ass toys in there. But I swear it's rigged, and it just takes my money every time. And I gave up after like a year of trying. I was like, I, I didn't know. It. I didn't know it actually worked. That's so funny. Like I, I know it works. No, I don't know if it actually works. Because it's <laughs> <my money>. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think that's the way that they're just getting our money back. <laughs> Maybe. There you go. It's like, just take it out of our, our paycheck. There you go. Well, they put Funkos in there. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Uh, okay. This is yeah. it, that, that claw machine is literally for you. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mia with like arrows. Comes with all your money when you come in every time. <laughs> but yeah. well, well, Mia, I, on behalf of Ashton and Johnny and myself, have a safe trip. Yeah. And we will see you in a couple of weeks because the panel is still happening and there's going to be an episode. Speaking of things that disturb us, we're going to be reading a walk through hell. And uh, yeah, I'm curious how that's, uh, I'm curious what everybody's reaction is going to be, including mine, because I love Garth Ennis, but I have limits. <laughs> To what I love about Garth Ennis. Okay. So yeah, let's let's see. We're gonna see what that is. And that's in a couple of weeks. That's actually October 30th. So definitely keep an eye on that for preview on previous worlds uh YouTube and Facebook. And um I guess that's it, guys. Aww. Sad face. No, well, there you go. All right. Um, hey guys, thanks for joining us this week for previous or weekly. Now we got it, we got to end it a little bit more upbeat than that. Okay. <laughs> I know, that, I think we go. no, that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Previous World Weekly. I'm one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. <laughs> I'm your other host, Ashton Greenwood. And, and I'm Anna Mia. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys at the Spinner Rack. See you next Wednesday. Don't forget that you can catch Previews World Weekly streaming live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific at Previews World on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Bye.